Welcome back. Built in Ithaca, the Tommy plane was a staple of World War I aviation, but the action those planes might have seen is nothing compared to the drama and luck it took to bring one of those historic planes back home. And now that he's home, the Tommy plane will fly once more. Here's TJ Horgan. Glenn Curtis is to the Wright brothers as Elvis Presley is to Chuck Berry. Where Berry had rock and roll, the Wright brothers had flight. But Glenn Curtis took that concept and ran with it to Ithaca, New York. The fathers of Ithaca at the time enticed them to come to Ithaca, okay. and they built a factory in the west end of town. They were the Thomas brothers, and their bread and butter, their jailhouse rock, if you will, was a World War I staple, one that Ithaca Aviation Heritage Foundation treasurer Randy Marcus has become familiar with. Thomas won the contract from the Army to produce a single-seat pursuit trainer. The Thomas Morse 1918 Scout plane was used to train fighter pilots in the war. Its features are unmistakably unique, from the 100-horsepower Gnome rotary engine to its body, made entirely of the very rare Sitka spruce tree. Every one of those boards was cut and uh, pieces were cut out of uh, the planks that we bought. Uh, and they were typically 22 feet long, you know, anywhere from 16 to 19 wide and two and a half inches thick. These planes were manufactured in Ithaca, New York, but what were once industrial staples of the city are now nowhere to be found. Uh, I'm not claiming it was me, but somebody said, well, you know, if there was only one left in the world, should it be here in Ithaca, New York, where it was, where it was manufactured? and the Ithaca Aviation Heritage Foundation was formed as a sort of search party for a Tommy. Eventually, they found a Tommy in San Diego. We made multiple efforts to contact the owner. Right. His name was Dr. William Thibault, and he initially had not responded to our attempts to contact him. But with this much dedication, luck was on their side at the Ithaca Festival, where they had a table with a sign that read, Tommy, come home. And an older woman with a little girl in hand mm -hmm. stopped at the table. And my wife said to the little girl, Tommy's an airplane. And the older woman looked at us and said, we know we have one and you want it. Randy took a gamble and assumed this duo was somehow related to the owner in San Diego and maybe he had received their emails after all. We made the assumption that Dr. Thibault, the owner of Tommy, was in Ithaca visiting grandchildren, and we sent him uh, more or less an invitation saying, the next time you're visiting your grandchildren, purely speculating that we were right, we'd love to show you what we're doing. He took us up on the invitation. And come next Christmas Eve, Tommy's owner was in town again, and Ithaca Aviation Heritage Foundation President Don Funk was the only man in town to close the deal. I was prepared with 15 minutes of dazzling him with all the great stuff that we're doing and how much it depends on what his decision. I got about two minutes into it. He said, Don, the airplane's yours. And now after 100 years, Tommy's finally home and he's being restored right here in a workshop off of the Ithaca Airport. Uh, all of the wood has been refinished, all the metal components have been refinished, the engine has been rebuilt, the propeller has been rebuilt, we were able to locate new tires. But simply restoring this plane wasn't good enough for the Heritage Foundation. They found a pilot and Tommy will fly again. The flight will occur uh, a little over a year from now. That's amazing. Uh, and everybody's getting very excited about that. Enduring a 15-year journey motivated by uninhibited passion and nothing more, with a few highs and plenty of lows, the Ithaca Aviation Heritage Foundation and their volunteers will next summer watch Tommy fly low and fly high. What's the first thing you do when you see Tommy fly up in the air? Oh, probably cry. Probably cry. Yeah. <laughs>